Hello, everyone. Thanks for listening to our topic. My name is Xiang Gao. Today, I and Xin Yi are going to talk about NIDAS image service on internal ERFS. Sorry, due to COVID-19, we are not able to give this talk at the conference in person. Now, let's get started. This topic consists of the following parts. First, I like to recap the ERFS file system which has been landed in Linux kernel upstream for about four years. Then, I will show the Dragonfly NIDAS architecture. Next, we are going to dip into ERFS over FS cache features, which has already been in kernel since Linux 5.19. After that, Xin Yi will talk more about the real practice of ERFS over FS cache and play a quick demo. Finally, we'd like to spend a minute to show our future work. Now, let's recap ERFS file system. So ERFS stands for Enhanced Read-Only File System. It was originally started in late 2017. After it had widely been used on smartphones, the preliminary version was merged in Linux 4.19 and formally landed in Linux 5.4. It is currently contributed by community lovers Alibaba Cloud, PyDance, Copad, Google, Huawei, Oppo, and more. It is a piece size block based file system with telepacking inline feature, which saves space and has better performance. It is targeted for various high-performance read-only solutions, such as system partitions and EPX for Android smartphone and other embedded systems, such as routers, IoT, etc. Also, live CDs, such as Arc RSO, etc and container image, such as NEDA's image service. This is the main part of this topic. It has profile LD4 or LVMA since 5.16, transparent data compression. Also, it has many useful features. Uh, many useful features are actively under development. The following, the following has two figures. On the left side, it is an Android smartphone use case. On the right hand side, it is Rough 36 RFS compatible container image use case. So this is RFS ecosystem. As you can see, as a self-contained file system, ERFS can support block device, files, or decks. You could use ERFS image on various types of stories anywhere. Also, it supports booting with U-Boot, and Grub is still working in progress. Nowadays, many Linux di distribution supports ERFS, such as Android, Arc Linux, Build Root, Debian, Fedora, Gentle, Open Analyst, Open SUSE, Yocto, and Ubuntu. In addition, URFS can also work on macOS with Mac Fuse. As another important use scenario, NetApp now supports URFS smoothly, connecting with other other ecosystems such as RONC, ContainerD, Cryo, Dragonfly, Harbor, Kata Container, Podman, and Sealer. Then, let's take an overview of Dragonfly NetApp's architecture. This slide is not a new stuff since it was introduced for many times. Typically, OCI image format is form defined by OCI image format specification which means a container image is set of layers just like an illustration on the right hand side 
Each layer is stored in the file archival format, specifically tar and gzip. Container root FS is generated by merging these layers, and it has layer deduplication only. Specific, specifically, the core part of each OCI blob is tar-gz, which is file-based format, easy to extract, append, but it has no disk summities. Also, compared with real file system, it needs to transverse to get the directory tree. Also, the plain tar and gzip stream is non seekable Researcher shows that polling packages account for 76% of container start time, but only 6.4% of that data is read. So image polling is the most consuming step during container startup. There could be some in-house workarounds, but code start is still pretty limited by the image pull stage. It is quite hard to slim all container image, especially when it used third-party base image or language runtimes, frameworks, etc. Also, several open source solutions are in public in different directions. Lazy polling solutions can be roughly divided into two different paths working with file-based format or block-based format. Nowadays, most solutions choose file-based format, since such file-based format itself is more flexible and it has more compatibility with original OCR image. In addition to that, due to such solutions are mostly self-contained, so the security concern is typically impacted by itself. Also, blog update can easily work in this way. More details are shown in the table below. In contract, there are some blog-based format solutions treating container image like virtual machine images. But since it heavily relies on random local FS, the OCI image compatibility and attack surface of the overall solutions could be challenging. Also, blob update seems almost impossible for block-based format solutions. Apart from lazy pulling, let's take a minute to discuss other drawbacks of the current OCI images. Naturally, due to the OCI image design, the OCI image layers will be stored and downloaded as a whole when metadata or data is updated. Also, deleted files or duplicated data can still be downloaded. For example, as illustrated below, layer 1 and 3 has the same file A, but layer 2 only has file B. In such case, file A will be duplicated un unnecessarily. OCI image runtime file data is untrusted. At least, no self-contained approach to achieve that. Finally, due to layer deduplication, data deduplication ratios are not idle. We've seen many issues with OCI image designs already. It needs to be optimized from the aspects of format, construction, distribution, operation, and so on. First of all, we try to make the image layer all install the data part of the file. That is the blob layer in the figure. The blob layer stores each chunk of the file data. For example, a 10 megabytes file is divided into 10 chunks. The advantage of this is that the granularity of deduplication is refined, and the deduplication can be done at the chunk level 
or it can allow the container to pull only the required chunk data instead of the entire file. Then the metadata of all layers are stacked together and placed as a single layer, meta layer in the figure. The meta records the metadata of the file, such as file name, permission bits, size, etc. It is also called bootstrap. In addition, the most important thing is to record the index of the location of each chunk in the blob and also includes the hash of each chunk so that we can do runtime data verification for each chunk of each file in the image. The, the design ideas mentioned before are now formed as the NetS project. This is a sub-project of the Dragonfly project incubated by CNCF. NetS implements image metadata and data separations, needed pooling and decompression on demand, chunk-based data deduplication and verification, flatten the metadata layer, and can directly present the entire file system view, which can reduce the overhead of overly FS stacking. It is compatible with the OCR artifacts, such as registry storage, container runtime, etc. At present, several companies have participated in the development and core construction of NetDance, such as Alibaba Cloud and Group and Bad Dance, and have conducted large-scale production in these companies. Note that NetDance is an officially supported image acceleration solutions by Kappa containers. NetDance has good cooperation with open source communities such as Dragonfly, Kata Containers, Open Analysts, Harbor and Sailor communities. And NetDance also provides related solutions for Open Analysts, Harbor and Sailor communities. The next part is one of, one of our recent work, EROFS over FS Cache. I like to discuss what's the problem we like to resolve if the image acceleration service implemented in user space. Nowadays, the image acceleration service usually implements advanced features such as deduplication, compression, lazy pulling, etc. In order to support these advanced features, a customized image format is usually needed here. And thus, the image acceleration service is usually implemented in user space since no suitable in kernel FS available. However, this design may suffer from performance, especially in high density employed scenarios. For example, when processes access the, the image, they will switch to kernel space through system calls like read or write and then switch to user space to parse the customized image format or implement the advanced features mentioned above. Frequent switching between kernel and user space become the performance bottleneck. As for NetAs, we try to make it an internal solution so that the performance overhead of switching between kernel and user space can be avoided. There are two technologies adopted to achieve this. Firstly, we implement an internal image format called RAFV6. It is based on the internal ERFS file system. With that, we can parse the image format inside the kernel space. Secondly, we implement the internal lazy polling technologies based on FS cache. This is merged in 5.19. In this case, processes will only switch to user space when cache meets. On cache hit, processes will not switch to user space anymore. With these two technologies mentioned above, 
Let us use more of an internal solution, since there is no frequent switching between kernel and user space anymore. It behaves better in performance. Next, we will discuss these two technologies in details. Prior to the introduction of Rough 36 format, NetAs used to handle image format in user space, working via views or whatever However, as I mentioned above, the user space solution will suffer great performance overhead since frequent switching between kernel and user space. To address this, we introduced Rough 36 image format. A container image format implemented in, in kernel based on EROFS file system. EROFS has been in the Linux mainline since the Linux 4.19. It is a native read-only file system suitable for various scenarios. It can save space effectively while keeping high performance. In the past, it was mainly used for smartphones. Over the past year, we made several imp improvements and enhancements to ERFS file system, adapting it to the container image storage scenarios, and finally making it as a container image format implemented on the kernel side. In addition, Rust 6 also carries out a series of op optimizations on the image format, such as block alignment, more compact metadata, and etc. Another important feature for the image acceleration is the lazy polling. Prior to this, almost all lazy polling solutions available were implemented in the user space. The user space solutions involves frequent kernel and user space switching and the memory copying between the kernel and user space, resulting in performance bottlenecks. This problem is especially prominent when all the container images have been downloaded locally, in which case the file access will still switch it to user space. In order to avoid the uh, unnecessary overhead, we can decouple the lazy polling into two options. One is a cache management of image data, and two is a fetching data through network on cache miss. If we implement cache management in kernel space, we can avoid kernel and user space reaching when the image is locally ready. This is exactly the main benefits of FS cache based lazy polling technology as we discussed today. As the name indicates, this technology is based on FS cache. FS cache cache files is the relatively major file caching solutions in Linux operating system. It is widely used in network file systems. Our attempt is to make it work with the lazy polling for local file systems such as ERFS. In this case, when the container accesses the container image, the FS cache will check whether the request requested data has been cached. On cache hit, the data will be read directly from the cache file. It is processed directly in kernel, and the kernel will not switch to the user space. While on cache miss, the user space daemon uh, NetSD will be notice, notified to process the request, while the container process will sleep on this. The NetSD will fetch data from remote write it to the cache file and wake the original asleep process. Once awakened, 
the process is able to read the data from the cache file. Apart, apart from that, there are other advantages of FS cache based lazy polling technology. The first optimization is called async prefetch. After the container is created, NetSD can start to download images even when the cache miss is not triggered. NetSD will download data and write it to the cache file. Then when the requested file range is within the prefetch range, the process will directly read from the cache file without switching to the user space. The second optimization is called network I.O. optimization. When the cache miss is triggered, NetSD can download more data at one time than requested. For example, when 4 kilobytes I.O. is requested, NetSD can actually download 1 megabyte of data at a time to reduce the impact of network transmission delay. Then, when the container accesses the remain data within this one megabyte, it won't switch to user space anymore. The user space solution cannot work like this because the cache management is implemented in user space and thus processes still need to switch to the user space to check if the requested range has been downloaded or not. The next part will be handed over to Xin Yin. He will show some problems and solutions when EuroFS or FS cache is landed. Thanks. Hello everyone, I'm Xin Yin. I work in the infrastructure department of Bydance. I'm very happy to introduce the work we have done during the practice of NetS EROFS over FS cache solution. Today, my topic is about how to enhance the reliability of NetS image service. At the present, for most image lazy pooling solutions, the reliability problem is mainly due to the user daemon participating in the I.O. path, which will introduce additional reliable dependencies. Uh, when the user daemon restarts or exits due to failure or upgrade, it may cause I.O. errors or I.O. hangs on the container side. It will lead to unpredictable result. First of all, let me introduce the I.O. path of ERLFS over FS cache scheme, which can be divided into two parts, on-demand re data request and uh, local data request. When the read request on the container side is forwarded to the FS cache framework for through ERLFS, it will determine whether the required data is ready in the local cache. And if so, just read it directly in the kernel space as shown in the step 5 in the figure. If the required data is not in the local cache, the on-demand process will be triggered. And shown in step 1 to 4 in the figure, the kernel initiates an on-demand request to the user daemon and NetSD pulls the remote data and fills it with the local cache and notifies the kernel that the data is ready and then kernel reads the cache data and returns it to container side. For the all over IO processing flow, when the user, user daemon restarts may be due to failure or upgrade. What we hope to achieve is uh, for the on-demand request, do not pass I.O. errors to the container side. There can be a short I.O. wait on the container side, and uh, the I.O. will be restored 
immediately after the user daemon restarts. For the local request, the container side is completely unaware of user daemon restarts. Even the user daemon can exit after the image is completely downloaded and to achieve daemonless. In order to achieve this, we have made the, the following designs. We will still discuss the, according to two types of I.O. request. For the local request, the current I.O. path has com completely bypassed the user space. However, due to the limitation of FS cache framework, after the user daemon exit, the kernel will set the FS cache to, to the no present state and all data requests will be directly returned with errors. The current workaround is pretty simple. Uh, we just keep the DVFD in the user space. For example, pass DVFD to a supervisor through Unix domain socket. So as to avoid FS cache from entering node present state after NetS exit. At the same time, we are also discussing with the community about the internal solution. For the on-demand request, it is a bit more complicated because it involves a lot of resource and state maintenance and recovery. This part, we will talk about the recovery of uh, FD resource. Firstly, let me introduce which FDs will be involved when the user daemon is running. The following figure describes the user daemon initialization and the ERFS mount press. Firstly, the user daemon opens the device file, DV cache files, to obtain the DVFD as a communica communication channel with the kernel. And when the Yarrow FS is mounted in the FS cache mode, the FS cache framework will create or open local cache fields and pass the FDs of the cache fields as anonymous FDs to the user daemon through DVFD. Then the user daemon will use this anonymous FDs for the local cache filling. So when the user daemon is running, a uh, one DUV FD and a large number of anonymous FDs are maintained. If all these FD are kept in the user space, such as sending them to the supervisor, it is very complicated and uh, prone to error. Uh, so our solution is for DUV FD maintained in the supervisor in user space, when the user daemon is restarted, pull back the DVFD from the supervisor and restore the communication channel with the kernel. For anonymous FDs, a new feature is implemented in the kernel. For the local cache fields that have been closed, an on-demand request can re-trigger the recreation and resending of an anonymous FD. In this way, we can ensure that the FD resource can be reliably restored after the user daemon restart. Uh, for the on-demand request, there is another state that needs to be restored, which is the uh, in-flight request. An in-flight request is an on-demand on request that the user daemon has received from the kernel as has not yet replied to the kernel. This kind of request may be lost when the abnormal exit of the user daemon and an IO error will be pressed to the container side. For hardening of the inflight request during user daemon restart, our solution is uh, firstly, when the user daemon exit, Instead of passing the IO error to the container side, that will cause the IO to wait and implement uh, the restore command. 
which can restore the in-flight request to unread state. In this way, the waiting IOs can be reprocessed after the user daemon restarts. Well, the above are the main design points that we did, and the final effect is also what we expected. The container side does not perceive the restart of our user daemon and can achieve the same stable experiences as the OCI image. And we have already submitted our patches to the kernel community and thanks the experts from Alibaba Cloud for their suggestion and support during the development. Okay, then I will show an uh, overall demo for the NetS EROFS over FS cache solution. First, let's check out the Linux kernel version. And load the catch fails modules. Delete the local cache. Clean up the environment. Start a netless snap shorter. And check our test script. This script will on run until the service is available and then X. Then let's try to run a netest container. It took 16 seconds in total. And we can see there is a yellow FS mount point. Then we'll clean up the environment again. And, and try to run an OCI container. We can say before starting an OCI container, all data needs to be downloaded. It took 27 seconds. Uh, the container test in the demo will download a large amount of data immediately after startup, which is often not friendly to the lazy polling scheme. But even so, the E2E time of the NetS container is much shorter than the OCI container. Next, I will introduce some future work plans for data duplicate trunks support page cache sharing in kernel, FS cache dimness in kernel solution, add standard EROFS compressed from format for NetS image service, working with FS DAX in the secure container scenario support memory sharing, 
explore the combination of FS cache and over FS as a unified cache system. Support lazy pooling of standard OCI blobs through NADAS. Well, that's all of our talk. Welcome to the website of NADAS and scan the code to join the discussion group. Thank you.